The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, folks. We're back. We're on for the uh, Tuesday, the 25th edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at the Dow down 132 at 39,279. This is going to be very interesting. Why? Because the um, because the Dow daily is actually in a buy mode. The weekly chart is in, uh, even though we still have a small short position we have core long position we have a small core position short but this is very interesting because it's in this u-shaped pattern that goes from a u to a double u second u and it's holding very nicely here and i suspect it's going to be trapped in this range for a little bit longer um and there's a chance now and this, this is we'll go one step at a time down's down 144. s p though is up and the s p is up 11 at 54.58, the high of 55.05.53 made four sessions ago. We're really just sideways to down, slightly lower highs and lower lows. Um, we do have a short position on this, a very, very tight stop. And uh, it was based on many factors, mostly because there was this peak D in the channel wave peak Ds where other things can happen. That's when you can start to prepare uh, to see some kind of uh, weakness. But internal strength is still predominating right now. So we're going to see what where the close is today. That's the most important thing. QQQ, index 100, is up uh, 3.23 at 477.17. Most importantly about this is that, again, you've got a peak D at 486.86, all-time high. And I'm watching – now, I have to mention that in all cases – the weekly charts are still very strong. So that means these are trading positions. And within that trading position, uh, 477.07 right now, uh, it's holding. Look, the 9 p.m. moving average is above the 14. The MACD is just about to cross negative. In fact, it has, but the day is young. It's a daily chart. The relative strength is starting to weaken. So I'm looking at certain aspects of the technicals that are beginning to weaken, but overall, uh, price has been moving higher up until the last four or five sessions. All right, let's go to the SMHs. The SMHs up 3.22 at 259.07, made an all-time high of 279.57, also a peak D. With all these peak Ds in the Chamber Wave methodology, there was just a chance that we were about to have some kind of a consolidation. Well, you can call this a consolidation because it's been four days since the high was made, but in fact, 279.57 to let's even go to today's low in the 255s. Uh, that is the biggest pullback. This is the uh, SMH and semiconductors have had since the April. That was a very big decline. But it's really, it's nothing really. I mean, if you're looking at NVIDIA, NVIDIA right now is up 4.27 at 122.38. Look at if you, you can see this, you see the price here? Look at the speed with which it's changing. This is almost like it was an earnings report. Um, 122.53, 122.55, 122.57, 122.60. So, 122 um, so th that kind of speed is, it, it, it gives you all the sense of hysteria, that there's a desperateness that and now you've got to watch very closely because if at any point in the next three, four days, NVIDIA is actually trading. Let's just see what that low was right there. Under the low of the 10th of June, which is 117.01, that's five points lower. But if it is, if it tags it just once, that's a, yep, now finally you've got yourself an NVIDIA pause. At this particular moment, it's just a kind of a little hiccup. Let's go back to our story. We're looking at the IWM. The IWM, in fact, is down 67 at 200.55. The, the Russell 2000 has actually has been holding pretty well. It's not great, but it's been holding well. And I'm wanting to see if we come out by the third week of July, if the I, let's just say by the end of July, if the IWM is trading above 211, that is going to be really good. And it's going to say, hey, finally, you've got the small caps participating. But at this particular point, 
You keep thinking they're going to, and they fail. They keep thinking they're going to, and they fail. We'll see what happens next. XLK is important. XLK is the S&P. Select uh, a Tiger's Spider Fund. Sorry. S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, uh, 224.72 up 2.31. Had a couple of bad days, but it's holding above the nine, the 14 period moving uh, average, but it's under the nine period exponential moving average. So we'll watch that very closely because at any point, if it takes out the high that was made at 232.59 on the 20th of June, uh, that weekly chart is going to get even stronger. It has to really, if you wanted to pull back deeper, it has to go under 219, and it has to do that by, I would say, this coming Monday. All right, here we go. Um, we're looking at gold. Uh, gold is down 10 at 2334. It's been struggling, but within a very narrow confine. And you're looking at the, S, the silver chart. Uh, that's actually a little bit ugly here. It's down 31 cents at 29.22. Uh, it's still negative under the uh, pink nine-period moving average. But the weekly chart still says, ho-hum, nothing much to see here. Uh, let me just go to uh, high-grade copper. High-grade copper is making lower lows and lower highs. So that's not participating as well as you would like to see. Let's go to the HGX. Uh, HGX is the Philadelphia Housing Index. And that is trading down sharply, down 10 at 672. So when I put this package together, I'm saying <clears throat> there has been select, very select uh, upside action over the last couple of weeks. That's starting to change. And the area that was holding quite well with Toll and Lenar, um, the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, that's just starting to show in the weekly chart the dreaded H pattern where it comes down sharply, in this case from a peak E around about the 748 area, makes this arch pattern, stalls at the uh, 670 area, and then rallies and then fails after a peak A. It's taking its time, but there's every bit of evidence that suggests that over the next, mm, I'd even say week, that we're going to take out this low that was made over here, that was about the 9th of, the 10th of June at 665.65. Um, and if that's the case, then you can see over a period of July, we're going to see whether or not the 655.50 uh, low that was made in the weekly chart back in April, the week of the 19th, if that doesn't hold, uh, that portends deeper, uh, deeper uh, pullback in the housing sector. Now, I need to just do this quickly to go to the E-minis. Uh, peak A, peak B, peak leg C, leg D. All right. So we've had a very quick move to the upside from the 5518 area. Um, that's that's going to be important. I drew this in. I was going to discuss it and discuss it in the sense that I wanted to say it doesn't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. But most importantly, let me just finish this. This is leg D in the one-minute chart. It's only a leg A in the five-minute chart and a leg A in the ten-minute chart. And you can see this expanding wedge formation. I remember years ago, we had someone in the Tiger Den who said, oh, my God, a diamond formation. And it was like the Hindenburg. And there's, a, there's a Hindenburg pattern as well, which once... I know more than once, maybe twice, he gave an explosive downside move besides the real Hindenburg. Well, this is the uh, expanding wedge formation right here. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Show you the 10 minute chart of the e mini that 200 p moving average has been absolutely. You know, we talk about resistance levels, you can talk about time, you can talk about a whole bunch of things, but when you use the moving average, just one moving average, um, each one tells a story. In this case, this is a 200 period moving average. And the story it's telling you is that that's tremendous resistance. It's been resistance for a, a couple of days. Now what we're looking at is this wedge formation, this diamond formation with an expanding wedge, now starting to form lower, it will it form lower highs and then take out the support level. So the whole idea is it's almost like uh, the stall take formation when this is the body, the oval body, and there are different implications. This takes a while and it expands, and then it makes a D, E, or F, and then it comes down. What happens next is important. I don't treat it as uh, one of those death-defying uh, stunts. It just tells you that that was, a re that was the resistance. The pink nine period moving average never went positive. It's still pink. It didn't go green. And it just says the weight of evidence, yes, is the MACD's weak, stochastics weak, the unbalanced volume's weak, the 914 is weak, the repellent of the 200 period moving average has done its job. Let's see if now it's able at 55.27. If it can get to the 55.26 area, it should grab that 55.27 area, stick to it, and then try to turn that into a... Uh, a level where you can start to trade for a period of time above the orange 200 period moving average. So I, I, I like to draw these in and then kind of say, well, this is that diamond pattern that once upon a time was supposed to be lethal. So the Hindenburg is, I can't, oh, just offhand. Now, what was the Hindenburg? Um, volume, oh, I can't remember it offhand, but there's a pattern called the Hindenburg, and then once in a while it works, and when it works, it really works, but it doesn't work very often. So, anyway, so with this said, I'm just watching this really closely. I see enough residual buying to, especially when you remember, I use this as a, as a kind of a benchmark. I said, uh, Microsoft has this chap wave. Uh, let's just do this MSF. F, M, uh, Okay, got it right there. Has this pattern that I call the stalk leg formation in the weekly chart. It's already gone above it. In this particular pattern, if it's going to go much higher, 
with only a very brief pullback, usually it doesn't even make a peak, it just either that leg continues, that would make this monthly chart a propeller shaft to the upside. I mean, that would just be phenomenal. I don't see that. I see most of these high, high the, the tech sector that have been so fantastic. I see them starting to bump into a lot of resistance. And I also get the sense that without a decent um, a re cooping a regeneration of energy it looks to me like the upside could be uh, limited i could be wrong about that because that dow uh, even though now look how it's come back is now down only 80 it was down 140 just now um, buying seems to be coming in so we're going to be watching these uh, semiconductor let me just go back to the same if it's now plus 3.5 that's a little different it's plus 2.20 uh, 2.11 it's really struggling and that just tells me that i I think I'm correct. They're saying that there should be some kind of a, a a pause here, but the market is the boss. We are just we are mere um, spectators. All right. So within this context, let me go back to what I was looking at. So you remember we were looking at the gold, and I said uh, let's just see um, how those support levels hold out. But if you look at the GDX. The GDX is really up in the higher range of this down channel. If this was the midpoint right here coming down in this daily chart, look, it's in the upper range. And I'm impressed. I think this is holding very nicely, especially when you consider the, the dollar. Look, the dollar is up uh, 20 ticks at 105.68. USD JPY should be down. And it is, I'm sorry, USD JPY, this is the, a yen. The yen should be up with the dollar, and it is. Um, it's at, almost at a new recovery high at 159.67. You remember, uh, instruments that make new highs tend to stay there for a little while. Instruments that make new lows tend to stay there, uh, symbols, I should say. And in this case, that's what's happening in a rectangle, trying to get to the uh, last high of 100 and, was that just under 160? It was 100 and... 159.98. It just missed a round number 160 by a fraction. And it's trying to get there. Um, so all I can say is that the, the instruments that we would look at here are U.S. as doing the bidding of the trend. Um, yes, look, here's the euro. Euro is down 1.069. And this is going to be interesting because Many times over the years, you look at the dollar and say, if the dollar's strong, sometimes the market is weak. But, you know, I don't see that. I've made it, made it a point of emphasizing over the last year and a half. Think of um, instruments, symbols. Yep. Oh, very good, uh, Dan. <laughs> symbols with a C Y M B A N S. Very good. You know, uh, Zildjian. Zildjian was the is symbol, the great symbol maker in the world, makes the best symbols. He's from Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, all right. So look at this. We've got um, here we go. So we look. We have the GDX pulling back, but not as much. Even it doesn't even look as bad as gold. Uh, gold is pulling back, but it hasn't broken key support. And here you've got the euro going the same trajectory, which is down. But it isn't breaking down, especially with the dollar doing so well. I'm kind of impressed that it's holding with an H pattern arch. Look, the arch and a second arch, a smaller one, like a cup and handle almost, um, holding quite well. I just wanted to point that out because uh, you need to. So I, for about a year and a half, I've been saying Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie. Those are my, those are my five little icons that I look at all the time as to say, the, the norm, the stuff that used to happen, when gold went up, the dollar went down. When the dollar went up, gold went down. It doesn't work the same way to the same percentages. It may be in direction, yes, but not with the same import. It, when the uh, dollar was lower, crude or no, yeah, yeah, and yes, when the dollar yields, when the yields were down, it would impact the crude oil. Crude oil would be, um, when the when the Dow was up, you watch crude oil very closely because if crude oil went in the same direction, that, it, that meant that those two components were in parallel 
But very often, historically, we would look back and say, oh, if crude is running like that, that could impact the, the market negatively. So all of those things that we used to use as benchmarks and VIX index, I mean, look at this. The VIX index, I, first of all, I like what's happening here with the VIX. The VIX is at 13.33, unchanged. So I love, I don't like this. When the market makes an all-time high, and within a day, almost sometimes the same day, the VIX index starts screaming to the upside. I like when it ignores it and says, ah, I'm not worried about the market. Uh, it's just doodling, sort of messing around in the 13s. To me, that's a good sign if you are bearish. So I'm going to be watching this very closely because if the VIX index um, – Stays in the 13s, even let's just imagine the Dow closes down 155, right? The S&P tries to rally, but it doesn't really get gone at any strength and it closes only up six. And then tomorrow's a weak session. Um, what you want to see is that the volatility index takes its time. So there's a lot of room to go into the 20s and 30s at some point when the market really takes a hit. I don't like it when it happens all too quickly. That just says you've run out of ammunition for the downside. I'll be back. That was up, uh, down 123. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keck Stack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Keckstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So Carnival Cruise uh, came out with earnings. It's up 70 cents at 17.08. A nice gap to the upside here. Now, is this a brand new leg B or is it an old E? And well, this is one of the things that in the Chamberway methodology, every once in a while, you just have to stop and say, you've already achieved a peak D. What comes after that? Well, you see the MACD turned down sharply. It's just about to cross positive again, but it hasn't. The uh, stochastic's weak at 58%. The on-balance volume had a fabulous V-shaped turnaround. is now a little bit overbought. The nine-period moving average pulled back, but with all the price under the 200-period moving average twice, the nine-period moving average stayed green. That's a big positive. So I say keep it as if it's continuing that previous uh, alphabet uh, from peak A, B, C, D, and this is an E. It could change to a B, but you don't need to worry about it now because it's all very positive. It could be E slash B. But the weekly chart had a very quick peak A to B to C, and now it's in leg D, and it's all within a very narrow confine. That just says to me um, that this is good action not as good as you would expect uh, with, uh, I mean, so many people are taking cruises now, but maybe this is just a lot of competition. I'm not sure what it is, but this should be traveling in the 20, uh, 20 knot area up in the weekly chart. And in fact, all it's doing is it's down at 17.12, up 74 cents. So yes, it's positive, but it's not as positive as it should be. Uh, what is RCL? RCL, I think, is the other one. Royal Cruise Lines? What did I do? Type it in. I, I never understand why this changes to the to the background chart. I think it's because of something that the Microsoft did. Uh, is it RCL? Yeah, this is uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises. Yeah, this is at a new, uh, this is at an all-time high. This is what I would have expected. This one's the the one that's finding deep favor in the public. Look, leg D in the monthly chart, uh, back in 2022, in the summer, it was under 40, and now it's at 160. That's fantastic. Leg D in the uh, monthly chart, leg F, could be an alternate count in the uh Weekly chart, Royal Caribbean cruises or Caribbean cruises, DE. And here you have to, once again, it's got this parallel count. Nothing to, to worry about here because the tacticals are actually quite good. The nine's over the 14. The MACD had a big slump, but it's coming back. Retro strength is coming back nicely. On balance, the volume is a tad overbought. Hmm, actually, the technicals on the daily chart are not that great, yet the price is very, very strong. Trading up 5.68 at 160.10, up 3.60. So this is either F or a B. I'm just putting in the parallel count. Um, I would have to do a little more work on the 120-minute chart, but the easiest thing to do is just put the parallel count and then look at, say, where's the support? Where would it break down completely? Under 150. So that's asking a lot right now. Okay, I wanted to go back to... hard to pull... Uh, yeah, I think I saw it over here. Yeah, a couple of uh, um, bold move in the in the Tiger YouTube Syntas all time high. You see, this is what I'm my my big issue right now is I don't want to get terribly carried away looking at the short side. We've built up a nice cash position. Um, Syntas is overalls, uniforms, rentals. I mean, for us, that's just a guiding post to the economy. And so far, this is acting really well. Look, there was an alternate count there. Uh, no, that was A, B, C. Pull back, didn't take out the left side low. So this could be an A, a gray A right here, and a gray B, gray beard right there. But the moment it goes over C, that becomes a D. And then this is a, something for those of you who do Chapman Wave methodology. Remember that if you get a peak C and then you have a time and price move to the downside, but you don't take out the starting trigger the buy signal, the low the low bar that started the whole move, then what happens when it gets to the D? I mean, I, if I say so often, what I mean is not just so often, but it is invariably, it's like 90%, you'll get a D, and then within a couple of bars, it does, sometimes it's an instant restart, mostly it is. But look, here it is, one, two, three, and the fourth bar 
takes out the left side high and the D. So what I tend to do is I put the E in the back of my mind. I'm saying, you know what? This could very well be an instant restart. That could be an A. So this is Sintas. This is telling us that the economy is actually very strong. So I'm not fighting that. I'm just looking at trades, and that's what we that's a, that's a, our positioning right now. And we built up cash. So let's see. Uh, good morning, Bowser. Could you take a look at AVPT? Sure can. A V P T is uh, oh oh oh. Did I mention this the other day? AVPT because it showed up in my screamer list, but I didn't know what to do with it. Or did I do that in my um, web in my video, my weekend video when I was looking at some of the screamers? Yeah, this is leg D. This is a point. Inc. A shares data security. Yeah, I think I did. I mentioned it somewhere, either here or in my newsletter or in my video. Um, yeah, this is leg D in the week in the monthly chart. It's leg D in the weekly chart. Oh, and I mentioned it's a leg D in the daily. When did I do that? Anyway, I like it very much. Looking to add at the 960-ish area. Um, oh, if oh, I agree with you. In fact, just give me a yell. Because I, too, would like to look at it um, between 982 and 942. The reason being, if it does it in a real quick move to the downside, that means something. If it takes its time, it means that it could pull back deeper. If it does it in one sudden news-related swoon, that's probably better. So I'm putting in AVPT, AVPT, the big question mark, and we have it at what price? At 10 points, it's not a screamer anymore because it went over uh, over $10. Okay. Hey, uh, dude, I agree with you. So um, because you say add to, <clears throat> in your case, I would say that that is a good number to look at, 962. I probably wouldn't want to add to it higher because then your average cost is going to be higher. I'd rather let it come down a little bit. And if it does that, in an orderly way, the daily, weekly, and monthly charts, the technicals are fabulous. So it's going to have to be news-related <clears throat> and a pretty sudden, steep move. Okay, next question was, I saw it over here. Oh, oh, so look at this. Remember, I spoke about AVAV. <clears throat> you remember that sudden move hit a round number 224.00, all-time high, round number high, four sessions ago, five Four, uh, four sessions ago, and I was trading at 190. And this is Aerovironment Inc., farm and military drones, switchblade. I mean, just sounds like the exact place you want to be. Let's look at this. So, what you remember, I was talking about speed. So, yeah, it had this steady move up, but look what it did in two bars. It took out thirty four bars on the left side. The reason why I can do that, I used to be a musician, professional musician. You've got to count bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. I'll be back. That was down 135. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. 
Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. A fair Isaac Paul does. Fair Isaac is primarily known for his spike of credit scores. Oh, my goodness. You know, I kept getting confused about it. I knew it was in some kind of the financial area, and I'd see it go by FICO. I thought, oh, yeah, FICO, is that really funny? And then I wouldn't look at this FICO back in 2022. is tootling along in 330 area. It's now trading at an all-time high. Thank you. Who was in the, in the uh, Tiger YouTube? Uh, bold move. Yeah, all-time high. Trading at 1,450.56, opens at 1,445.37. Um, peak A, B, C, D in the daily. Um, is this a brand new B in the weekly chart? Well, it's a C, and so this is the FICO score. Let me just put that in here. Oh, that was obvious, right? FICO score. Oh, software. Decision Technologies Services enables businesses to automate, enhance, and connect. Huh? 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 Morningstar? What, what? What? Credit scores, which is a widely used industry benchmark to determine the credit worthiness of an individual. Well, how about that? All time high as we speak. So I, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm just going to say the weekly chart technique is, is very good, and the daily chart is very good. Um, it, this pattern here says, that you can rally in the rectangle with a lopsided cup formation to just under, just on, or just above the previous high. And then if you pull back to the halfway marker of the rectangle, you better be careful because if you go under it, that's a problem. So the I was 1451.78 uh, back on the 20th of May. And lo and behold, uh, here we are at uh, a new, right here as we speak, a new all time high just above that. All right, so I'm watching it. Yes, great. Um, so, so let me put this into the XLF contingent. So this is XLF is a, a great peak A, great peak B right now. The high level, there's your W going to a U shape, going to a second U. There's a W formation in the weekly. Monthly chart is still very good. So as long as the financials are holding well, I'm not getting overly bearish here. I'm sector negative and sector positive. And that's all these. I'm going to come back to Microsoft in a minute, but I just wanted to finish this. And KRE uh, <clears throat> did have a rally and stopped dead at the 200 period moving average. It's trading at 47.17. This is the S&P regional banking ETF. Uh, look at this. Just can't get above that 200 period moving average. The weekly chart says, yep, arch formation, cup formation, another arch formation. This is the m shape pattern. Oh, I'm watching this because at any point in July, if this closes under 45, that is a real problem. But right now at 47.19, it, let's just say it's holding quite well. So let's go back to Microsoft. And what I wanted to say is that Microsoft Daily 
uh, is up a dollar ninety two at four four nine point fifty nine. So the high that was made yesterday was four fifty one, was it? Yeah, four fifty two seventy five. So let me just change this here. Four fifty two. Point seventy five. So I'm anticipating that today we don't make a peak. We don't we don't go above four fifty two seventy five and we make a peak C in Microsoft. And then there's a chance that we just make a nominal new high. So that means it could be to if today there's no new high, it could be tomorrow or Friday. And then I think based on the weekly chart. Chem wave, storm click formation. I'm going to be watching this very closely because it has to be step by step, but it's also one step. In other words, this E becomes a peak E if, for whatever reason, this week's high is not taken out and we start to pull back. Then there should be a pullback, and that pullback should, first of all, test 43.60, but probably. Uh, the 40, 40, 431, 430 area. Um, yes. And, that's that, and that in July is really what I'm monitoring very closely. And then we'll see if there's going to be a fabulous reversal from that level. All right. So that's just using Microsoft. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we ha we're, we're along Microsoft. But in the meantime, um, ENVX, oh, one of those on my list that we didn't get back into. We were in it, and Vonix, oh my goodness, look at this. A 33% move up today, up four at 16.05. We were in it some time ago. Oh, frustration, frustration. We were in it uh, at 11.98 back in Feb. Um, and we took a little bit of profit, actually, and then we got taken out. Uh, the stop was hit. So, um, and now it never got back in. Plenty of opportunity. Went all the way down to six. Um, so all I can say is, yeah, and I did the homework. Look, you can see. Oh, let me just show you this. Uh, I'll do this live. Look, so what I did was, I'd done my homework on this because I wanted to get back in after that peak D was made. And even yesterday, it was holding the nine-period moving average. I don't know what the news is. It must be earnings today. Um and look at this. There's a cup formation that I chose that particular plumb line. It went to almost exact. There's no such thing as almost exact. It's either exact or not. But it was almost exactly right to the high that was made back in December the 18th at, uh, what was that, 14 or 13? 14.78 back on the 19th of, at peak E, back on the 19th of December. Plummets down to the, whoa, five point something area. Plenty of time to get in, 5.70. And look at this. It walks the nine-period moving average, uses the black 14-period moving average as the trampoline springboard, and lo and behold, goes to the D, does. But look, I had left side, right side, price time match to this particular low right there. I did chamber of inside wedge, target repellent line. It went right to it, did everything. And then I pulled back, and I thought, well, I've missed it there. We've got to get back in. What is it? And vi Oops, it's a, what is it? In Enovix Corporation, silicon anode, anode, lithium iron battery development product produces a 3D cell architecture. It's just got all the words you want to hear these days. And look what it did. Well, the monthly chart says, hey, it's still very early to get in, but it is a leg D in the um, weekly chart. The technicals are good. Okay, so keep this on your list, folks, because it's a story stock. So if you have the patience, this may be one to put in your drawer and don't look at it again and just say, okay, wake me up when it hits. Let's give it, give it a number, 25. Wake me up when it hits 25. Uh, but in the meantime, it's at 16.01, and I missed it for my subscribers. Sorry about that. Um, okay, now the TVTX just popped up on my screamer list. TVTX. So this is, uh, uh oh, can't read it. Therapeutics, tra traverse, traverse therapeutics. I'd seen this before. It didn't bother about it because it made the H pattern went under it. And now look at this trading up 4.49 percent, four and a half percent, up 35 cents at eight. 
14. Peak A, peak B, leg C in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart is horrible. It's starting to move. Okay, oh, battery supply deal. All right, that's good to know. All right, I'll be back. We've got a lot to look at just as we wrap up because I want to tell you what to look for after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yes, and it will involve the semiconductors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, so um, so SLV, which is the iShares Silver Trust, look at this chart. It did make a leg D, probably a peak D in the monthly chart. did a beautiful symmetry over the left side, right side price time match. That's called bar symmetry, number of bars on the left, down to the number of bars back up on the right. It was just about the same. There's a monthly chart doing that over a period of two and a half years. And look at the weekly chart. Yeah, it's a little bit weaker, but it's holding above the nine, which is way above the 14. And you've got lower highs and lower lows from the peak D in the uh, daily. So if there's a sudden slide into the 25s. It's a trading at 26.66. That'll be a problem. So what am I anticipating for today? To tell you the truth, this is the day that is the big test. Why? Because after such a whopper of a, a turn down in, in stocks like NVIDIA um, and many of the others, I don't want to go through them right now, 
if they can't do more than just a bounce or get over yesterday's high, that's just telling you that the sa- the selling pressure came out of the blue. That's exactly what happens. It comes where you least expect it, and it's persistent because everybody keeps thinking, oh, yeah, buying's going to come in, and it doesn't come in. And that's the reason why I think that the semiconductors are in a consolidation here and that we need to see it's at 257.70, but if it starts to trade under 255, 254 in the next couple of days, that says, you know what, this could last a lot longer than just a very brief couple of days. It could even be maybe two weeks or three weeks of consolidation in the summer. It could even be more, but I'm just going one step at a time. What you would need to see to change that is a huge rally in the SMHs to the 260, I'd even say 265 level. That's a lot. That's about seven points from here. I don't know what's going to do. I think we've turned the corner. Oh, I wanted to talk about the tide. Just real briefly before I hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Uh, Should be a great program today, and I'll be back with Tom later on. Tide. I think there's been a, a, a modest change of tide on the daily charts. And that tide says now you have to start looking at lower highs and lower lows. That's why today is critical. I don't know if that's the fact. I'm saying today to me is critical in imparting the information that will say to me, yes, short term, coming down a little further. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll be back with Tom. Check.